So one thing that I learned while doing this TED Talk process was that stories are really important uh, because people listen to stories, they don't listen to facts, and they want to hear your story. So I did another public speaking workshop over the summer with my public speaking teacher, and she was, and the guy basically said, oh, you know, if you're going to tell a story, tell a funny one, because people love that, they, they eat that up. So I was like, okay, um, I took this really literally, and over the summer, I made a list of every time someone ever laughed at anything I said. So why is it so important? So everyone has a story to tell, um, and this includes teenagers. This is Jack Andrika. He is a 15-year-old in America. He has recently discovered a test for pancreatic cancer, which has the capacity to save millions of lives, and he was just 15 when he did this. These are some of the climate kids in America, who this October are currently taking a case in the Supreme Court against the Trump administration for negligence of our planet. The youngest member is just nine years old. And this is me at my first ever session of the European Youth Parliament. I'm with my committee, uh, and we're all 15 years old. And um, it, was a really, it was a really great weekend. We spent the whole weekend discussing solutions for terrorism and youth radicalization, not really what the normal 15 year olds doing on a Saturday. Um, <laughs> but it was one of the best weekends of my life. And actually, at the end of it, our resolution, which we had to make up over the weekend, passed a general assembly with 110 votes for and nine against. And we were so proud of it that um, I remember my chair telling me, uh, I was saying like, oh, like, when is this going to be sent to Jean-Claude Juncker? Like, it's amazing, they need to enact this. And they're like, oh, it isn't going to be sent off. And I was like, what? Um, but yeah, so that was my committee. Um, but it's incredible that how often young people are left out. We're left out every single day. Um, I'll give you an example of this. Uh, this May in Ireland, we had a referendum and it was to decide whether we wanted to repeal the Eighth Amendment, which was uh, giving women the right to choose and um, whether we can have abortions or not. Um, so I'm 17 years old. Uh, they've noticed I'm a girl. Uh, I can drive. I can have consensual sex. And I can definitely get pregnant because of that. And yet, because I'm 17, I couldn't vote. And this is something that really affected me and all of my friends in the run-up to the referendum. We were talking about it, we were like, this is so crazy that we can't vote, even though some of us didn't want it to repeal, and some of us did. At the end of it, we were like, what's going on? Why can't we vote in this? And we are the primary stakeholders, and teenage pregnancies are very high. Um, and yeah, this is something that kind of dawned on me, that um, young people don't have the right to vote. Um, and I was wondering why, um, why does this happen? So it actually happens, and uh, it's happened for a long time. So democracy is very good at leaving people out. Uh, so we look back to the first ever democracy, which was in ancient Greece, in Athens. Uh, they only allowed men with status and wealth to vote. And this actually continues all the way up until 1831 in Ireland. And up until then, only men with status and wealth could vote over the age of 35 or something like that. And only 100 years ago, women get the vote in Ireland. And only in 1965 did black people in America get the vote. Uh, while researching this, I was like, why does it take so long? What were people so afraid of? And so I took a look back at the reasons that people gave um, during the anti-suffrage movement of the 1900s, why they thought that women couldn't vote, because that seems like a really crazy idea to me. Um, so these were some of the official reasons of the, that the campaign gave. So first of all, women are too innocent to be exposed to political life. Okay. Uh, women are too irrational and emotional to make an intelligent <laughs> contribution. Cool. Uh, besides, why would you? Women are already represented by their husbands, not necessary. <laughs> and uh, this is my personal favourite, uh, when anti-suffragists were asked uh, what a world where women should vote would look like, uh, some of them said, women will stop marrying, stop having children, and the human race will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, these, obviously these reasons seem completely ludicrous, or at least I hope they do to you. Um, but at the time, they weren't that far-fetched. These are the official campaign reasons. And the Women's National Anti-Suffrage League in the UK had just under 10,000 subscribers and over 104 branches in the UK and Ireland. So this, these were popular ideas. Um, and if we look to our modern system of human rights, it's the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, CSV, um, which is yeah, a big list of all the rights we're entitled to. Um, so one of these rights is um, the right to political representation. So everyone has a right to participate in their government, um, be that through your own voice or through someone else's voice that they've chosen. But also detailed in these, in these rights is Article 2, which says that everybody's entitled to these rights. You can't distinguish. You can't distinguish like gender, sexuality, race. It's not important. And this includes age. So this, is, this was what struck me when I looked at this. But if I were to ask you, 
What would you think if I said every under 18 year old should be able to vote? Every teenager. You're probably like, no way, right? And you might give some of these reasons. So children are too innocent for politics. Children are too irrational and emotional to make an intelligent contribution. Besides, why would you? Kids are already represented by their parents. And um, the very real and all-consuming fear that Justin Bieber would be president. <laughs> um, so you can't you can't deny that there's parallels between these reasons and the reason that people gave that women shouldn't vote. And um, you know maybe these reasons are just as ludicrous and just as dated. Um, but okay, you're still saying to me, you know, how how is it going to work? My two-year-old is hardly going to toddle up to the polling station today to throw in a vote for Mickey D. It's not happening. Um, how would this work? So um, there was a recent study done by a medical company who was trying to determine uh, what age kids could make medical decisions for themselves. And it was concluded that um, by the age of 12, the processes involved in decision making, like um, ex verbal expression, abstract reasoning, all these processes are developed in our brains by the age of 12. Um, so what does this mean? It means that we can make an informed decision when we are 12 um, about we take information, we can process that and make an informed decision. So um, I say, if we're 12, we can choose our representatives, choose whether we want to say yes or no in a referendum. That's not that difficult. Um, and up until the age of 12, our parents vote on our behalf. So what's the benefit of this, you say? Um, firstly, if we start children voting earlier, then we're going to, they're going to become more politically informed at an earlier age, which is a really beneficial thing, because at the moment, voter turnout in Ireland is 30%, similar in democracies around the world, very, very low. And this doesn't benefit anyone, because if you don't have political representation, what do you have? Nothing. Chaos. And secondly, uh, if kids have political weight, that means the politicians have to listen to them. So that means things that we believe in make it into parliament. So this means things like climate change, student housing, other kinds of rights that we want and uh, things that we want make it into parliament. We have our voices heard because the politicians want to stay in power. Um, and lastly, you benefit the parents because parents at the moment are forced to represent the needs and wants of an entire family through just one or two votes, which we don't think is fair considering they are the ones working the hardest in our society today, bringing up kids and working at the same time. So I believe in 2018, we are facing a choice. Is voting a privilege for a select few? Or is it a right for all? Has our democracy reached its limits? Or can, it, can we stretch it even further? Can we make it even more inclusive? And if you, even if you don't believe in anything I've said, think of these kids that thought they could change the world in just one weekend and could solve all of your problems. We're not the only ones. Think of the 1.9 billion kids worldwide who currently don't have any say. Everybody has a story to tell. We just need the power to do so. Thank you.